I'm gonna do it. I think it's time. I'm gonna reveal my deepest, darkest secret to the YouTube audience right here, right now. <sighs> okay, so my deepest, darkest secret is What's up everybody, Reese here from StudyNova.com and first of all, no, your eyes are not deceiving you, I am wearing a different shirt, not my maroon shirt as usual, but that's not the point. In this video, we're going to be talking about the business internal assessment and four very quick, very easy to follow tips that you can start implementing in your business IA, whether you started it now or whether you are in the process of generating ideas for your business IA at the very beginning phase of it. So. To get into it, why do we need these four critical tips? Well, the idea for these four tips is that you will more effectively understand what the process of the business IA is and how to effectively tackle it. Because in my experience, business wasn't exactly a subject that I struggled with. I found it the most enjoyable and easiest to really understand. And that translated really well into my business IA when I ended up doing it. And I ended up getting quite a high grade. I think I got a high level six by following these four steps that I kind of came up with myself. Tip number one, planning. Whether you're a higher level or standard level student, you really need to understand the importance of planning out your entire business IA. Now, you don't have to go into the details, but you do need to have an idea of what companies you'd like to cover or what company you'd like to cover, as well as what problem you'd like to solve for that company. So essentially, it consists of three parts with this planning phase. You need to identify which company you want to go for, especially for higher level students, because you need to go for more accessible companies, but we'll get to that in a second. You need to be looking for a solution, or rather, you need to be looking for a problem to identify that you would like to create a solution for. So you need to be really aware of the certain issues revolving around this company and then kind of thinking of and then kind of thinking of solutions at the same time. It's also important to remember that in this process you need to take into account your motivation for finding a solution to the problem. It could come from part of the course, part of your business course that you very much enjoy and you'd like to use that in an actual research report. Now it would make more sense to do that as opposed to doing a part of the course that you're not so interested in and trying to find a solution based on content that you really don't like. So those are factors you need to take into account when you're planning for your business IA. Plan out which company you'd like to go for or which type when you're searching. Plan out what kind of problem that you'd like to look for, what seems more interesting to you to solve. Plan out the solution based on which part of the course that you like as part of the IB business course and then try to think of the flexibility as a fallback because arguably it's not going to be as simple for HL students especially if you go looking for a smaller company to do your primary research for you might find that the problem that this small company is going through is not the problem that you had kind of thought out and wanted to solve so you're gonna have to add a bit of flexibility with your planning but hey that's the whole point of planning. You have to look forward and forecast what difficulties might arise in your IA and kind of plan out a contingency for those situations happening. So now that planning is out of the way, let's move on to the second part, which is the whole research phase. Now, for higher level students, you have the additional burden of having to do primary data, which is the most annoying part because it kind of inhibits you from going after bigger companies. A standard level student might select Samsung to do their secondary research on and have all the secondary research available for them on the internet, but for a high level student, you don't have access to Samsung because you need primary data. You need stuff like interviews, transcripts, maybe a survey for the company, and a big company like Samsung or Apple or a multinational billion dollar company is not going to have the time to cater for an IB student such as yourself. So in the primary research phase, you're going to need to go after accessible companies, small local companies that you could definitely look up easily and then get into contact with someone in higher management to interview them or to carry out whatever research you'd like to have in your research report. So that's the primary research element for HL. Now that advice is more catered to students that haven't started the business IA process and those students that have already started it can kind of basically ignore this tip completely. And the second part of this tip is obviously the standard level students. The standard level students, you guys have a lot of access to Google and all the secondary research online without having to worry about the primary data. So as far as secondary research goes, you're looking for articles on the company from accredited resources such as BBC, CNN, you know, legitimate resources, just not Wikipedia or blogs. So those are the type of things you're looking for when you're doing secondary research as a standard level student. And as I said earlier, a higher level student, you're going to be going after primary research in a a smaller company because you're just not going to be able to get it from a big company and if you do it's probably not going to be enough for what you need so 
With all that being said, let's move on to the third part, which is actually integrating all the sources and your research into your business IA. Now, this is probably where a lot of students will struggle a bit. And the point about integrating all this research is that it's not just evidence and proof for your arguments. You need to show why it's significant. So let's say Samsung has a problem with its marketing for some reason, because we all know Samsung is completely insane with its marketing. But let's say for argument's sake that they have a problem with marketing. Now you as a standard level or higher level student can see that they do have a marketing problem and you find multiple sources that kind of back up your claim. Now the incorrect method of approaching your business IA with your sources and your research is essentially just using them as a stamp of certification. So Samsung clearly has a marketing issue as shown by this source and then that's essentially it. That's not the correct way of going about it because you haven't shown the significance of the source and the significance of your argument. You need to understand that there's multiple stakeholders involved when it comes to business and you need to kind of identify all those different perspectives. So with your evidence, what you need to be talking about, so in this case, if Samsung did have a marketing issue, you would say, this source backs up my claim that Samsung has a marketing issue and it has implications on A stakeholders because they are involved in the business in such and such and also B stakeholders because such and such. Because when you're analyzing a business, you need to be thinking about the different stakeholders such as investors, consumers, and employees and stuff like that. And depending on what your problem is that you're trying to solve, your evidence needs to really back up and show the significance and the implications on all those stakeholders. So it's not as simple as finding a source and then planting it in your business IA and that's it, you can dust your hands and walk away from it. No, you need to use your source to add credibility and to add to your argument that Samsung has a big problem and it's amplified by this source because it proves that XYZ. So it's not just here's a source, here's proof. You need to show why it's significant and that's why you use your sources instead of just having them there as a stamp of certification that, yeah, I'm right, Samsung does have a marketing problem. But it's more like, why? Why does this business have this problem? Where does it originate from? Who does it affect? And what are the implications in the future? And that is where your solution is supposed to come in and where you devise a proper solution and discuss the effectiveness of your proposed solution in your business IA. Which leads me to my last point about feedback. Now, there's only two types of feedback you can really get. Actually, maybe even three. But the two I'm going to focus on is really harsh feedback and really good feedback because anything in the middle is just something you can work around. Really harsh feedback is just something you're going to need to take. Remember, your teachers are there for you. They want you to improve. They want what's best for you. They don't want this to bring you down. On the contrary, they want this to motivate you and to prove to the teachers that you can do a lot better. Yeah, sure, it might suck maybe after the first or second day, but afterwards when you pick yourself back up and you look through everything you've done in your business IA and reflect over it, you're going to think to yourself, yeah, I could do much better than this. So when it comes to negative feedback, don't be too discouraged by it. Don't let it shock you too much. I went through IB and I was given quite a lot of negative feedback, especially during my extended essay. But the end result was that I produced a very good piece of work. And that's the exact kind of mentality that you need when you get or if you get a very harsh or very critical piece of feedback from your teacher on your business IA. Now, on the flip side of that, you've got very, very, very good feedback from your teacher. You've completed a very perfect business IA, but they focused on very minor details, very minute details. Now, in that instance, you have two options. You can either kick back and relax, which is, I guess, fair because your business IA is pretty good already, or you could focus on the very, very minute details that the teacher has kind of nitpicked over and try to focus on improving those. Because essentially, if you've received very, very good feedback, your teacher is essentially saying, you got a great business IA and there's not much for me to do aside from take it apart at a very molecular level. And that's the level that you could definitely improve on to really get those high grade boundaries. So your two options are to kick back, relax, and the other one is to really work on fixing those small things. I mean, you could do a bit of both as well, kick back and try to solve things at the same time in your business IA. But essentially, if you want to go for the highest grade possible, you will need to really focus aggressively on fixing those issues 
and improving, improving, improving. Because when you're at a comfortable level, you don't want to sit back and relax. Otherwise, you know, you get too complacent and who knows, the end result might be a grade that you're not satisfied with. Because remember, the business IA or the internal assessments in general are regulated by teachers outside of your school. So you will need to constantly work to ensure that you are maximizing your potential as far as grades go. So, to sum it all up, the first tip is you need to plan, plan out your IA, what business you're doing, what problem you're trying to solve, and what's most interesting to you to try to solve, as well as the research. So if you're higher level, you need to understand the limitations to your research and go for smaller companies and try to understand which pieces of data you need to get from these companies so that you can integrate that in your business IA. With standard level, it's not such an issue because you've just got the internet at your disposal and you just get all the secondary research from there. Tip number three, integrating the sources. So remember, when you have pieces of evidence or when you've identified a problem, the evidence and the research that you get isn't supposed to just be there to certify the fact that yes, there is a problem within the company. Your research is supposed to suggest is that there is a bigger problem involved that involves multiple different stakeholders and you're supposed to be catering to those different perspectives and saying how these are implicated in the long term future for the business itself, which is where your solution will come in and where you can discuss on the effectiveness of said solution. And now the fourth tip is obviously what I just spoke about the feedback and how you should approach it. If you've had really harsh feedback, then you need to approach it with a very positive mindset. It's there for your benefit. It's not meant to discourage you, at least not for a long period of time. If you've received very positive feedback, then you need to be very, very, very careful and attentive to all the small details that you might have missed out, just so you can put yourself over the edge if you're at like a high six, low level seven boundary. Those small details that you fix could put you over into the next grade boundary, being maybe a seven or a high level six. So that's the end of the video. I hope you found these four tips interesting, amusing, or at least informative. I hope you could apply them to your business IA if you're in the process of it and you're a little bit stuck, or if you're just about to start the business IA. And if you have any questions, just leave them down in the comments below. I'll reply to them as soon as possible. In the meantime, you can check out studynova.com for the business articles that I've written over there and ask me questions there in the comments section. But for now, I'm Reese from studynova.com and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care everybody. Bye bye.